A push pull amplifier is a power amplifier and is used where it requires a high power is to be supplied to the load. The circuit shown here is a base basic push pull amplifier stage. It consists of an NPN transistor Q1 and a PNP transistor Q2. Here we can see that if V in it is positive, then in this case the Q1 this operate this Q1 operates as an emitter follower. Hence V out in this case if V in is positive, V out is equal to V in minus V B E1 and Q2 this Q2 remains off because its emitter junction is reverse biased as V in is positive. I repeat if V in is positive then only Q1 is conducting and V out we will get the current direction like this. Q1 is conducting and hence V out it is equal to V in minus V B E1 Q2 will remain off as this junction base emitter junction is reverse biased. Now let us see what happens if V in is negative. If V in is negative then we can say that this Q1 remains off because now the base emitter junction of Q1 is reverse biased and hence only Q2 conducts. Hence V out in this case it is equal to V in plus V B E2. And the conduction takes place like this. Hence we have seen two cases when V in is positive. Here V in was positive. In this case this Q1 pushes the current into RL and Q2. Q2 it was off. And again when V in it was negative. We have seen that Q1 remains off due to reverse bias of the base emitter junction and this Q2 was conducting and Q2 pulls the current from RL. I repeat Q1 pushes the current into RL when V in is positive and Q2 pulls the current from RL. Hence this is known as a push pull stage. Now let us see the circuit in detail. What happens when V in approaches 0? The rough characteristics can be shown like this. It suggests that the two segments cannot meet if they must remain linear. Here we can see that the x axis is denoting the input voltage and the y axis we are getting the V out. This positive side of V out we get this when Q1 is on and this happens when V in is positive. And when the input voltage is negative Q2 is on and Q1 is off. And we can see that these two segments cannot meet if they must remain linear. Hence exhibiting a dead zone. We call it as a dead zone around V in is equal to 0. This is a dead zone. Now why does the circuit suffer from a dead zone? We can make two observations. The first observation we make is Q1 and Q2 cannot be simultaneously on. We have seen that for Q1 to be on, for Q1 to be on, we require that V in must be greater than V out. But for Q2 to be on, V in must be less than V out. And secondly, if V in that is input voltage is equal to 0, then the output voltage V out must also be equal to 0. Let us try to understand these two points. 
by assuming that let v in is beginning to increase from 0. v in is increasing from 0 and v out v out it is at 0 initially. Now v in must reach at least equal to VBE it is nearly equal to 600 to 700 millivolt to make the transistor Q1 on. Let us see this again. To make the transistor Q1 on V in must be at least approximately equal to 600 to 700 millivolts so that the transistor Q1 turns on. The output therefore remains at 0 for V in is less than 600 millivolt. Hence if V in it was initially equal to here we can see that V in it was initially equal to 0. Now if V in is increasing in its positive side and to make the transistor Q1 on, the value of V in must be approximately equal to 600 millivolt, such that the Q1 gets on. Hence, the output V out is exhibiting a dead zone if V in is less than 600 millivolt. Similarly, we can also assume that if V in is now decreasing from 0, and initially we can assume that V out is equal to 0. Now to turn on the transistor Q2 it also requires V in to be minus 600 millivolt. So up to that value the circuit exhibit a dead zone. Hence in summary we can say that the push-pull stage operates as a PNP or NPN emitter follower for sufficiently negative or positive inputs respectively but turns off but turns off for minus 600 millivolt V in up to plus 600 millivolt. The resulting dead zone substantially distorts the input signal also. We can see here this is the V in, this is V out and here it is the distortion because of the dead zone. And this distortion is known as crossover distortion. This crossover distortion occurs in the presence of dead zone.